All right, let's hit some cars. Bring that chin down, look over the shoulder, drop your ear to that shoulder, circle all the way around, back to the start. Reverse that process. We're gonna go three each way here. As with all of our cars, make that circle as big as you possibly can with avoiding pain and then adjusting any other joints above and below. So in this case, I want to get more cervical rotation, but I don't want to move my spine below. We're going to do the same thing at spine, same thought process, the joint above is our, is our neck right now, and then our hip is keep both of those set. So I'm moving completely from the top of my tailbone to the bottom of my neck, making the circle as big as possible. If you're having a hard time not leaning or pushing your hip opposite, you can actually do this seated, which you'll notice from time to time in our classes we might go to, to kind of reinforce that position, creating what they call a fixed point that you can rotate around a full axis of rotation. Three each way as well here, as per always, avoid ranges of motion that may cause pain or discomfort. Moving on, we're going to hit into scapula. Arms straight out in front. Remember they can go forward and back but not up and down. So start off squeezing your shoulder blades, elevating your shoulder blades, pushing your shoulder blades forward and then pulling them back down, pushing them forward again, elevating, pulling back, pulling down, pushing forward. We're going to go three circles with our shoulder blades getting as much motion as I possibly can. I'm going to do a quarter turn for you, keeping that torso locked in. So a lot of times we'll see people get here, arch, then keep your ribs down and just move isolated through your scapula. Moving on, we're going to hit into our shoulder. Start off by rotating that arm out. We're going to come up and across our midline keeping that arm pulled out. Once we hit a block, you'll feel it. You're gonna start rotating that arm. We're gonna keep rotating until I come all the way back around to my pocket. When I'm at that pocket, I wanna do a quarter turn so you can see this. This arm is facing away. When I go back, hit a block, slowly unravel, and then come back to start. We're gonna go three. Making that circle as big as you possibly can. Controlling that joint above. So that would be our elbow in this case. Not trying to bend or move in any kind of particular way other than making that shoulder circle as big as possible. And that joint below being our rib cage. Transitioning to the opposite side. You'll notice there's gonna be a right-left discrepancy. Like, oh man, my dominant side gets a little bit more range or has a, bit, a little bit more ability to control at that range. And I think it's a really good opportunity to go through that body's asymmetrical. And if we choose to load you bilaterally, we need to make sure that we allow for that joint to move to not cause pain or dysfunction. This is always a really good active assessment to show why we do everything asymmetrically. So we can get that range from one side versus the other, or get a, some sort of metric on what that range is so we don't load it inappropriately. We're gonna transition down to our elbow. We're gonna start off supinated or we're holding soup. We're gonna flex that bicep, rotate that arm down, and then reverse. We're gonna go three each way here. We always talk about this position when we come down to supinated grip stuff, so if you're really struggling with things like chaps or a supinated grip pull-up, we really want to get that supination in there at the forearm, finding it, fixing it, and then start loading it. Three, and then we'll transfer into our wrist. On wrist, elbows are pointing at 90 degrees. Imaginarily, I'm holding two cell phones or lasers pointing up to the ceiling. I'm gonna start off pulling my fingers to the ground, bring my hands in, adjust, rotate out, and then come back to the start. If you're struggling, we can either do hold on to one wrist or we can make a closed fist. Really try to lock in that forearm position. 
And we're thinking the rationale for holding on to the wrist is if I'm really struggling to keep my forearm in position, if I'm really struggling to keep my hands long, then we go to a closed fist. We're gonna go three each way there. We are completely aware that this one doesn't have a ton of range, but that's why it makes it that much more important to go ahead and hit that. When we're done with that, we're gonna move on to hip. Find something stable, a wall, a fence, top of your couch. We're gonna bring that knee up, keeping that torso locked in. Rotate, pull out. As I pull that knee out, I wanna keep my belly button sternum, point it straight ahead, rotate, push back and away. Keeping this fixed, bring up both knee, heel, slowly unravel, back to the start. We're gonna go three, three, and then we'll switch to the other side. Lock in your position, create stability, get to that sticky part or that part that's hard to move, slow down. side. Again, we're aware that we're going to have symmetry and lack thereof. Just brings more of a reason to train things. Three on this side and then we're going to transfer down to the ground. So if you have a towel or a yoga mat, go ahead and place that on the ground next to you. We're going to go ahead and make our way to the ground. Locking in the upper leg. Set yourself up so I have all that motion that I want coming below my knee. So I'm going to rotate my shin out, extend my knee up, rotate that shin in, come on down. We're going to go three in both directions, up and down. And we're going to lower our guard to our shin and do what we did on our ankle. And if you're keeping track at home, this is the exact same cue we gave if you were struggling to keep your, your forearm locked in. We're just, for your wrist, we're just doing that now before with our ankle. So I'm grabbing my ankle, I'm locking, or locking in that shin, and I'm going to rotate as big of a possible circle as I can around that fixed shin. Really trying to stretch that outer part. Again, finding that safest, greatest range of motion you can hit. Three, clockwise to counterclockwise. And then switch sides. We're gonna transfer over to that other knee. Again, we're going to go back into our pails, 
40 percent, 60 percent, 80, 100, 3, 2, 1, and release. We're going to go five reps. Pack the air, 20 percent, 30 percent, 40 percent, 60, 80, 100, 3, 2, 1, and release. Here we go, two more reps. Pack the air, 20%, 40%, 60%, 80%, 100%, 3, 2, 1, relax, one more rep. Pack the air, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 3, 2, 1, and relax. Cool, we're gonna get into a quadruped position for bird dog. On bird dog and dead bug, mind you, which you're gonna get here as well, we're thinking keeping your ribs and your pelvis in the same position as I move my arms and my legs. So we're gonna reach with our right arm and push back with our left for 10, and then we're gonna switch sides. So a big breath in, set that pelvic position, push that heel and hand away from each other as far apart as we can get for 10 reps. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, switch shots, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We're going to transition to our back. We're going to do that same exact pattern, just in the dead bug. Now we're thinking about keeping that back as flat to the ground by controlling that rib position relative to the pelvis. Pull your knees up, start at 90 degrees. Place your arm out. We're going to reach with our right arm and left leg for 10 reps. Keeping that back glued to the ground. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Switching sides. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's the first round. We're going to go through that again. We got two rounds of the pails, two rounds of the bird dog, two rounds of the dead bug. Cut. If you need a break, pause it right here. Cut. Let's get our second round in. So we'll get a little bit more work in on this pails. We're going to ramp up to 100%. I'm hoping for a three count for five reps. Try to make that 100% as intense as you possibly can without pain. All right, so set up. You might have some more range in that shoulder, so if you want to stack on top of books, please do so. Let's take a deep breath in. Pack the air, 20%, ramping up to 40, 60, 80, 100, your safest, greatest effort for three, two, one, and release. Pack the air, ramp up, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, for three, two, two. Release, pack the air, start ramping, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, three, two, three. Release, two more. Right, start ramping, pack the air, 20%, 40%, 60, 80, 100, 3, 2, 4, release. Last rep, pack the air, start ramping, 20, 40, 60, 80, 
100, 10, 2, 5. Make sure you went to the 10 count. Here we go, we're going to a bird dog next. Line up here, remember control your ribs to your pelvis, lock it in. 10, left arm, right leg. 10, right arm, right leg. The right arm, left leg. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, switching sides. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Dead bug on our back. Knee up, heel up, arms out. We're going to go 10 and then switch sides. Three. If you're having problems maintaining pressure, create a closed fist, create more tension in your feet. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. Switching sides. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten. Nice. All right. So movement prep is done. Now we're going to transition to actual work today. We got ten rounds of six each side single arm swing. On the single arm swing, same mechanics of the hinges we always do. Chins are vertical, torso travels down to the leg, hips gotta move posteriorly. As we stand up, we wanna come up to about 90, 90% extension of the hip. Is when we start seeing people reach really, really high and they start leaning back, we take a lot of compression and push it down to the lowest part that's over the ground. And that becomes my lumbar spine. So we want to stay stacked and keep the pressure on our legs. And as we go down and up, it's about getting that extended position at the hip, not at the lumbar. On that single arm position, we apply this thing called a corkscrew. We're rotating our arm in the direction I'm going to create more pressure and control in that, that shoulder while I'm moving. So as I go down, that thumb goes up. As I go up, that thumb goes up to allow for stability here, but control and movement fluidity up here. So that corkscrew combined with good hinge mechanics might not be as important as we get through the first couple rounds. When fatigue, fatigue starts to creep up, we gotta make sure that we have those things locked in. The final component for safety is always start and end on the ground, and that's a really underrated factor. When we start every movement, we need to create tension before we proceed moving, and as we lower it down, we need to maintain that tension because those bookends of the movement are where the injuries usually come. It's not necessarily the second rep, it's the first rep. So if we can make that first rep really, really good, by creating tension in your hand, locking in that shoulder position, going right into your swing from the start, and then as we transition down, we want a escalator finish, not a elevator finish, meaning that it's a slow gradual descent like a plane coming down on a runway as opposed to a helicopter landing. Okay? All right, so 10 sets of six, single arm, single arm swing. I'm going to start up here, keep up if you can, if you need to pause at any point, please do so. Let's see if we got, see what we got today. Go faster, get a little less rest in between. 
you don't have one kettlebell that's really, really heavy. Uh, just try to do your best and manage your recovery so you can get through this in an effective manner without changing your position. Round two. Two rounds in, if you need some water, by all means, help yourself. Just make sure that you keep in position, locked in. What we find in these elongated things with minimal stuff is focus and attention to detail goes up, right? So as fatigue goes up, my level of execution needs to go with it because that's when I'm most at risk for injury. And we always want to make sure that we're putting safety above everything else. It doesn't matter how well scripted the program is or how well thought out the exercise selection is, if we're not lifting with really good technique for every single rep to the best of our ability, we're not gonna get the most out of it, but all more importantly, is we're putting yourself in a vulnerable position. We don't ever wanna get hurt at the sake of some program or sake of some exercise. Always putting safety and performance above everything else. Let's get this round three. Set your position up, good hinge, start your round. side shot so you guys get a little different angle. Uh, see what it actually looks like with the shin staying vertical and see the trap line of the torso. Second so, bottom means please stay in the same position. I just want to give you guys a different angle. So round four, crank it up. If your heart rate is pretty high, just pause and wait a little bit longer. Obviously you know I'm in great physical, mental, spiritual, physical health. So I can go for it. Here we go. this arm's moving and I'm focused on this, potentially losing power 
here. So creating a closed fist, like you would do like if you were boxing, like I'm throwing a jab, that same thought of creating tension here to create that reciprocal action. As I'm pushing, I'm pulling back. That same thought here as I go into a swing, create tension, especially if we're really trying to learn this side, right? Like when we're trying to learn something, we want to remove things that could potentially be inhibitory or competing, right? So if I'm all over the place with this, and I have poor control or struggling here, you know, we have two things we can always control, really our breath and then our hands on our feet. So I guess three things, but if we want to classify hands and feet as one thing, feet are dug in, other hands locked in, and I can really let this arm move under control, timing, and actual speed and power. So as we're learning this, where this hand goes, it's respective of the ultimate outcome. I will eventually get here with some with a lot of people, especially in class. But for today, if we're really struggling with this corkscrew mechanic, bring this hand in, create a closed fist, treat it like I was throwing a punch, and I'm gonna pull back as much as I'm pushing forward. That same thought here is as I come up, I'm locking in that position and I'm allowing for that arm to come forward. Let's get into this round six. Really big emphasis on whatever I'm doing with this free hand. Let that happen by creating a closed fist so this arm can do its job to start. Two 
more rounds. If you want to get a quick walk around, if you have one heavy kettlebell, this is getting pretty hard on your forearms. Grip is always a great, great governor. What do you want to do? One of the things that we always get asked is why we use so much back grips. And you can see it in kettlebells. It's control, it's stability. But it's this thought of like, from here to here to here to here to here to here to here, where is the most vulnerable spot, right? Like, we're moving through a hinge pattern. Do I have control here to here? Is this the limiting factor versus that limiting factor? And what is the risk reward? If this gives out before this gives out, what is the risk versus the reward of the two, right? We can obviously tell like, my forearms being tired and that's slowing me down is gonna have some sort of some sort of stop point that's well beyond, well before anything happens here, and that's a good thing, right? If this gives out, the risk is incre incrementally higher, right? But if I give out this first, the risk is down, right? So as long as I know that this is a governor and my ability to control this, it helps me protect this, we can start to see the bigger picture of picking, picking rate limiting exercises that still get us the outcome of velocity or force or capacity, but we're doing it in a safe and effective manner. And the other aspect is your cardiovascular fitness. If you're gasping for air and you're really struggling to recover, it's also a really great area of improvement. And we think about your ability to control whatever implement you're holding with your hand or your feet, and then the other side of it too is your ability to recover between these bouts of intense exercises is really going to mandate your overall long-term projection of your goals. And this thought of can we increase mobility, can we increase your fitness, can we increase like things in other planes of motion in this period of time are all really good kind of concepts to get through. So when we get back to a barbell, when we get back to dumbbells, we have a lot more potential built in. Let's get this round nine. We'll have one more talking point and then we'll finish this up in round 10. All right, here we go. Hands, feet, breath. Actually, you might want to pull down on your heels 
get this slight elevation and turn that pelvis into that position. That recruits a little bit more hamstrings. And then we're just gonna go right into our normal breathing like we did there. If you're more of a narrow type, like if you're like a little bit longer and taller and skinnier, you might feel a little bit better in that one. And that actually you might reverse it, right? So that position that we're really good at taking, pushing air out, we might have to focus on taking air in, which is what we want in that one. And the final one is just very simple, lying down on your stomach, crocodile breathing. And you might just want to do that just for, just kind of almost a meditative purpose, where I just want to relax and get to that position and just focus on my diaphragmatic breathing. And all these positions, it's breathe in through the nose, breathe out through the mouth like I'm blowing through a straw. If you actually have a straw, by all means, please use it. If you have a balloon, that's another really good option to do that. Uh, we're just looking for whatever position gets you the best breathing mechanics, gets you the best recovery, so we can come back and train hard the next day.